I'm reminded of a story of a Jewish man who one time came to Sayyidina Umar uh, and said to him, Sif lana habibak, describe your beloved to us. Right? So the Jewish man, he knew who the beloved of Sayyidina Umar was. He didn't say Nabiyak or Rasulak or something. Sif lana habibak. And, and Sayyidina Umar, he, he said, this is, this is difficult. So why is it difficult? So this is just a, this is a very difficult thing to do. And so the Jewish man, he kind of lost his patience and he went to Sayyidina Ali. So this was during the caliphate of Sayyidina Umar. And he said, Sif, sif lana or Sif li habibak, describe for me your beloved. Uh, and Sayyidina Ali, he said to him, he said, Sif lana mata'a dunya. Describe for us the pleasures of the world. And the man said, oh, you're going to have to be more specific than that. <laughs> and then he says, well, how do you expect me to describe the one who was addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily you dominate magnificent, magnanimous character. <coughs> so the ethos of the Prophet <laughs> is something that is is just unfathomable, it is incredible. The kind of human being uh, that he was, you know, um, a prophet, a statesman, a warrior, you know, a true man in every sense of the word. You know, as one of my colleagues said, visit his wife during the day, he would fight the Byzantines in the afternoon, and then pray to Hajjad at night. MashaAllah. And I was meditating about the khuluq of the Prophet And something that's just amazing is the Prophet in a position of power would forgive people. And this is, uh, this is incredible, you know. Because that's true virtue. Someone who doesn't have power. Imagine like a, a really weak man. You know, someone tries to pick a fight with him on the street or something, and he says, look, I didn't engage. He doesn't have the power to even physically defend himself. That's not virtue. That's weakness. You shouldn't confuse weakness for virtue. Or someone who has an incredible ability to defend the faith, right? Using dala'il, proofs that are rational and scriptural. And someone is trying to goad him into this type of polemical debate or something where there's, you know, it's where you know, people are sort of, it's, it's, it's a type of jidal uh, that is, that is reaching good character and he restrains himself. You know, that's virtue, not someone who says, well, I didn't engage, but I don't know anything. That's not virtue. Right? The Prophet Wasallam during the conquest of Mecca, this was incredible, that when he came into the city and Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu, when he passed by Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, he was saying, Al yawma yawmul malhama, al uh, Quraysha, that today is a day of slaughter, the, the debasement of the Quraysh. Right? And so word reached the Prophet that this is what Sa'ad was saying. Uh, his name is Sa'ad. Ibn Ubadi. No. And, and, so, uh, and so the Prophet he said, Go tell him not to say that. And so this writer approached him and he said, don't say this. And he said, I don't believe you. Uh, and so the writer came back to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet took off his blessed imama and he said, present this to Sa'ad uh, and take the liwa from him, the standard that he was holding. But give it to his son, Qais. So this is the, the genius, the hikmah of the Prophet ﷺ. Just taking the standard from him would hurt his feelings, as it were, because he's holding the standard of the Muslims. But give it to his son, Sa'ad's son. So that when you honor the son, you automatically honor the father. If I shake your son's hand, I'm honoring you. So the Prophet sallam, he passed by Abu Sufyan and he said, Al yawma yawmul marhama, yur'izzullahu Qurayshan. Today is a day of mercy, the exaltation of the Qurayshan. This is incredible when we think about it. It's really incredible. La tafriba alaykum al right? So you find in the in the previous prophets all of the uh, fadail, 
of the previous prophets are in him, sallallahu alayhi wa And you look at the sort of story of Yusuf alayhi salam, rejected by his brothers, was forced into exile, came into a position of power, right? And then uh, had the ability to exact retribution, retribution from his brethren, and he forgave them. This is exactly what happens in the life of the Prophet Muhammad and even, he even quotes from Surah Yusuf, the conquest of Mecca, right? Today there's no blemish upon him. You know? This is true virtue. Kana Anas ibn Malik described him as saying he was the most formidable and courageous of human beings. But true courage is balanced, right? That there's something called foolhardiness, where there's, you sort of plunge yourself into danger without thinking. That's not wise. And then the other extreme of that is cowardice, where you fail to respond, right? So he is the pinnacle of ethics, the pinnacle of good ethics, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is an area of study, you know, just by itself is incredible. On the day of Ghazwa al Uhud, as we heard as well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is reported that, you know, he injured his blessed face and there was blood streaming down his face, but he was trying to catch the blood with his hands and absorbing the blood with his clothes. And the Sahaba said, you know, what are you doing? And he said, if one drop of blood should strike the earth, then immediately the angels will come and vanquish all of our enemies. Right? And so they said, let it, let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> and they saw him a short time later with his hands raised. Allah said, oh, it's, it's game over now. Allahumma ahdi qawmi, innahum la ya'lamu. This is what he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's something similar attributed to Isa alayhi salam in the New Testament Gospels and the Gospel of Luke, but almost all scholars, textual critics, believe it's a fabrication. That he didn't actually, that Isa alayhi salam did not say this. It's important. He apparently said it while crucified, and of course, wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu wa lakin shubhi alahu. So these are the virtues of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, Brother Barak Azul, he brought up the drawing of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And the drawings of those days was poetry, mm. you know? And the poet, the Sha'ir, had a lot of power, right? If a Sha'ir that was well known um, insulted you or lampooned you, lambasted you in a, in a poem, that could stay for generation after generation after generation. They were feared, the poets. And they were beloved. They would have poetry contests, right? The Mu'allaqat al sabaa the seven greatest odes would be hung in the Kaaba, right? So when the Prophet sallallahu came into Medina, Medina to Al-Munawwara, uh, there was a man, Hassan ibn Thabit, who would later become a companion, radiallahu anhu, but he was a great poet. And so the Mushrikeen in Medina, who would become the Munafiqeen, Right? They came to Hassan ibn Thabit and they said, you know, when you see him, write something, make fun of him, you know, uh, insult him, uh, lampoon him in a poem so that we can laugh and we can recite it, you know. And so Hassan said, okay, they gave him some money, right? Here's some money. So Hassan, he said, you know, he was waiting by a certain road and for the Prophet to pass by. And then he sees the Prophet <laughs> And then he just, he is in awe. And then he goes back to the Mushrikeen and he says, here, I don't need this anymore. I don't need your money. <laughs> and he said, did you write something? He said, yeah, I wrote it. What is it? He said, Lamma ra'aytuhu anwarahu sata'at wada'atu min khifati kaffi ala basari خَوْفًا عَلَى بَصَرِي مِنْ حُسْنِ سُورَتِهِ فَلَسْتُ أَنْذُرُهُ إِلَّا عَلَى قَدْرِي رُوحٌ مِنَ النُّورِ فِي جِسْمٍ مِنَ الْقَمَرِ كَحِلْيَةً نُسِجَتْ مِنَ الْأَنْجُمِ الزُّهْرِ SubhanAllah. He said, when I saw his lights approaching, it was like anwar, lights were approaching. I had to cover my eyes 
because of the illumination. I was fearful of losing my eyesight because of the beauty of his countenance. He said, it was like a soul made of light. His body looked like the full moon. Uh, it, he looked like a mantle stitched together with illuminous stars. Muhammadun basharun ka laysa kal bashari wa huwa yaqudatun wa nasu kal hajari. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. He's like a gem or a ruby, while other men are stones. A gem is also a stone. It's the same genus. He's not saying he's an angel or something like that." He's not some, you know, demigod. He's still a human <laughs> being, but he's like a diamond. Allah, right? Allah, the greatest Allah. of human beings. This is just one glance into the countenance of the Prophet And the Prophet he was, you know, he had these virtues. He was a long suffering person. He was very, very uh, forgiving. You know, we have to learn the sunnah, you know. I mentioned this the other day in the khutbah that you know people they go on these YouTube rabbit holes <laughs> and they come across channel after channel after channel of anti-Muslim content, right? And they, it gets them into a type of crisis, but they fail to put things in perspective. As he said again, I'm taking everything from brother. I love this. When kafar speak about the Prophet it's like dogs barking at the moon. Does it affect the majesty of the moon as it traverses the sky? Not Allah. one iota. It's a total waste of time to insult the Prophet <laughs> It gets you nowhere. It's a total waste of time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَا تَسْتِوِ الْخَبِيثُ وَالْتَيِّرُ You know, good and foul things and good things are not the same. وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ even if the sheer abundance of the foulness would dazzle you. It's so amazing, there's so much of it. Fear God, O people of deep understanding. The people of loop, like the people of essential understanding. They know. They put things in perspective. They know He is the Shafi'ah on the Yom Al Qiyamah. What does some loser on YouTube think? Who cares? <laughs> Are you kidding me? The awrah, the leaves of the trees of Jannah, they have the name of the Prophet <laughs> The Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. The name of the Prophet is on the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is some loser saying? We should pity them. Really? We should make dua for them. We should want their guidance. And the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted the guidance of the worst of his enemies. He would not give up on them. This is what I mean when I say he's long suffering. He would not give up. After 20 years of fighting, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he came to Abu Sufyan ibn Harq. Isn't it about time for you to acknowledge who I am? I'm about to take over Mecca. Isn't this a sign? I'm going to break these idols. Isn't it about time? And he said, SubhanAllah, you're still, you, you're still calling me to your religion. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is what he cared about ultimately. The woman who cannibalized Hamza radiallahu anhu on the battlefield. Because the Quraysh would do things like this. She came to him completely veiled. Hindu bin Urtaba. Completely veiled. And she said, praise be to the one who made his religion victorious. And he said, Man ant, who are you? Hind. He said, Marhaba. Mm -hmm. Welcome. And Hamza was, you know, so he was his uncle, but he was more like his brother. They were almost the same age. Mm -hmm. It's like his brother. She cannibalized his brother. And he, because the point is, come into Islam. Mm -hmm. This is incredible power to be able to do something like this. Mm -hmm. When you could flex and just, he could have done it. And he's well within his rights to do that. But to forgive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to forgive the man Wahshi who killed Sayyidina Hamza. All of the leaders of the Mushrikeen at the Battle of Uhud, most of the leaders on that day became Muslim. Amr ibn al As, who was fighting against the Prophet, وسلم, he said to his son on his deathbed, Abdullah, he said, There was a time when I hated the Prophet وسلم, so much, I fought against him in many battles. And then there came a time I loved him so much, I couldn't raise my eyes to his. 
because I was awestruck by him. And if you ask me right now, what did he look like? I don't even really remember because I couldn't look him in the eyes when I became Muslim. And this is a person that the Prophet showed so much love to. Someone who was fighting against him. He showed him so much love that Ahmad ibn al-As, he came to the Prophet one day and he said, uh, uh, um, uh, um, He said, who do you love the most from humanity? And the Prophet immediately said, Man nas Who do you love most for humanity? And the Prophet said, Aisha. <laughs> MashaAllah. You see? His wife. He loved his wife. And some of the you know more tough desert Arabs, you know, they don't you know they don't admit you love your wife. Right? It's part of the culture of the tough, you know. He said, Man he said, whoever lives in the desert becomes sort of gruff. Like if the Bedouin would come and ask the Prophet some questions, the Sahaba had mixed feelings about it. Because they loved the questions, but they were kind of rough with the Prophet like They would grab his clothes, and they, would, they wouldn't address him by his title and things like that. Or the man came, he urinated in the masjid. The Sahaba got up to address the man. You know what that means. The guy's in trouble. And the Prophet said, Da'u, leave him. Let him finish. And then the Prophet goes up himself. Imagine if this happened today. Imagine this. He wouldn't make it out of the masjid Allah. <laughs> Imagine a homeless man or something like that. Just comes in, he can't find the bathroom, and you know. What's going to happen to this man? SubhanAllah. He said, Yo, you know, brother, this is a. Ya akhir Arab. That's how he said it. Oh, oh, my Arab brother. You know, this is a, appealing to him. He said, Yeah, this is a masjid. This is a place of salawat and afkar. You know. We don't do these things. And he said, oh, I, I didn't know. You know? And then when the man was leaving the masjid, he turned around because the Sahaba scared him. He said, Allahumma irhamni wa muhammadan wa la tarham ma'ana ahadan. So, oh, he said, oh Allah, have mercy on me and on the Prophet وسلم, and nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> the Prophet laughed. And he said, you're constricting the rahmah. Don't constrict them. <laughs> it's okay, make dua for everybody. You know, this is incredible. As the brother mentioned again, they're, they're making fun of his name in Mecca. You know? They call Mudamma, A'udhu Billah, which has the opposite meaning of Muhammad. The Sahaba were sad and they're, oh, this is, this is terrible. And the Prophet said, what are they, what are they saying? They're, they're, they're saying this, and he said, oh, these Quraysh are strange. <laughs> what strange, weird people they are. Well, what do you mean? A master tactician to diffuse the entire situation with a bit of humor. He says, They're reviling this Mudamma. I'm Muhammad. I'm the most praised. Well, who are they talking about? That's not that's not me. People draw a picture, that's 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 what some loser drew. That's not the Prophet. Who is the Prophet We have a picture of him in the Quran. The Prophet is more beloved to the believers in their own selves. Sayyidina Ali said the Prophet was more beloved to us than anything. And here, shay here means something that was brought into existence. Sha'a sha'u means. Something that is willed into existence. This does, does not include, in this context, it doesn't include Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So out of all of creation, out of everything that's willed into existence, he was the most beloved to us. Even more than cold water. So he's using an analogy that the desert Arab would understand. Oh, he really loves the Prophet. He's cold water for the desert Arab. That's, you know, Jannah on earth, as it were. So, I mean, there's many things we can say, but I'm going to cut it short, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, put us under the banner of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the Yom al Qiyamah and, uh, uh, and uh, make us of those who benefit from the shafa'ah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to implement it. Of the Prophet in our lives.